Hello guys, uh, welcome back. This is your boy again. How are you guys doing? Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you guys are watching this video from. And meanwhile, today is Sunday. Please go to church. Eh? Don't be too lazy. Go to church or you can just simply pray in your own house. It's not by force to go to church though. You can simply pray in your own house. Just use today to recognize God and what God has done for you throughout the week. Hmm? And meanwhile, uh, this discussion, of course, before the title of this video, this discussion is from matured mind. If you know you are a small boy and you don't know the meaning of uh, of uh, getting a woman pregnant or even marriage or anything, I want you to keep quiet. Don't say anything. This video is from matured mind only. And now you saw the title there. It's about a maker Ike and his wife. So far, so good. So far, so good. We saw a lot of uh, issues. We do not know who to believe, if they should believe the Maker Ike himself or if they should believe uh, the Maker Ike's wife, that's the person of Suzani. The Maker Ike says Suzani took all his property, made him to go to point zero, from 100 to zero, to like start over again that uh, uh, took his family took his wife beat his mother Susanne was a bad wife was a this he used the uh, he was the one that uh, that paid for Susanne's school fees uh, everything uh so many many other stuff as well but however though the maker i can never said anything that was great about Susanne in his interview so Suzani, out of the blue, decided to come out to speak. And the first, let me give thanks to Chudi for interviewing Maker Ike's wife, Suzani, who spoke well. And meanwhile, Suzani has uh, a backup. A, should I say, someone who actually experienced the whole issues with her. And that is a, that's a person of uh, Maker Ike and Suzani's first son, first child. And uh, that one also spoke as well, talked about how he doesn't like his father, how his father is dead to him, and there is so many other stuff as well. So we're going to be like listening to some of the interview, and me, I'm going to be giving you my some of my input in the matter. I mean, well, like I said before, this matter is for my job, my dude. If you do it, be boy, boy, you don't ever understand what you will discuss. If you know you are a boy, you don't, know, you don't even know what's up. You know what I mean, uh. <laughs> but as a boy also, you have so much to learn. Just in case you want to start up a relationship, start up a family, you have a lot to learn as well. So it is also good for you to listen, and also all, all those guests as well. It's also good for you to listen, and uh, please remove your feminist mind you know, from this issue, and remove your pride as a man, you know, big man, big man that want to control his own from this issue. Or matured my own. But meanwhile, before we jump straight to a maker in this matter, there is one video I want to share with you about a man in diaspora advising other men to please not to consider bringing their wife down to you. I beg, I use God beg Una. I use God beg all of Una. Una will be men because of the experience where I don't see for this abroad. If you know, say, you be authoritative man, no carry your wife come this abroad. Now the message when I get for now today be that. If you know, say, you be authoritative man, you they like to take control over woman where where. You they like to tell, when, may you, when you tell that woman, sit down there, make the woman sit down. That life when you t follow that woman, live back home in Africa. You they like to take advantage of women, especially wife or your girlfriend or whatever that girl may be to you. If you know, say, you be mad when be say, when you cough, you want to make your wife they shake. When you talk, you want to make your wife they obey every word when you talk. Any when you want to make your wife no even get voice for where you they talk at all. Just because of the kind of life where our mothers live under our, our fathers. If you know say so you be that kind of man and you there for this abroad, you they plan to carry your wife come this abroad. 
may you get change of mind. No carry that woman come abroad, though, because for this abroad, they know the few oppressed woman. No, if you carry that woman, you make that mistake of carrying that woman to this abroad. That woman go frustrate you. That woman it go make your life bend. Though. That woman it go turn your life around. The labor when you don't labor over the years for this abroad, the woman he go take advantage of you and you will regret your life. If you know say you be loving man, you be romantic man, you be man when you really love your wife, when you know they like to oppress woman. Now there he go favor you to carry your wife come this abroad. But if you know say woman know the talk for where you they talk, if you know say when you cough, that woman need to the shake the piece of body and to the shit for body. No carry that woman come abroad because it go purge you. It go purge you. Well, okay, that was that guy I have to say, and it kind of like made a lot of sense. So, you know, today that Sunday, I have an open mind. So I think the best bet for all those kind of men is to change. Have a change of heart. You know, it is always good eh, to give your spouse free choices. You know, because they are human beings on their own. They have their own thinking. They have their own mind. They have a way of uh, looking at issues differently. So it is always nice eh, to allow them as well to think their own now. You as an African man should you always be about imposing and imposing and imposing. There's a way you impose things. You know, we are still learning. When it comes to the relationship, we are still learning. We are still learning every day. And things might change in the near in the nearest uh in the nearest future. But I think he gave a really nice advice. If you are an authoritative man, he said, Look, guy, your wife come up. But that is to say, not only Nigeria, not only food, not only Africa. Good to oppress women. What a shame. Not only Africa are good to oppress women. So you see what our this of course. So let's look, let's move past that. Let's talk about uh, Mika IG. Without further ado, I want to play you a video from uh Mika Ike's wife when she was asked about uh -uh, that uh Mika Ike said he traveled abroad. And before he came back, you have sold all the properties. This is what the woman has to say. I don't know. That he says that he went to the UK, to the US, with a luggage. <laughs> and by the time he came, you had swept everything clean from him. Okay. <laughs> so, um, at that time, we didn't have money. Okay. The landlord had kicked us out of the house. The time we were given had come to an end. So we decided to move some things to the school compound because we still had space, you know, we we're still building, we did, it was not filled with children and all that, so we had space. So I moved some things into, that, uh, into the school compound and I was living with his mom. I was sleeping on the floor with my kids in his mom's small apartment. You understand? So I will come from Isola to Magodo every day to, to, to run the school. So that's where the move, the move right. is coming from, right. you understand? Right. But at that time, I had planned to leave. Okay. So he traveled, but he was within Nigeria, he traveled too. Okay. So when, he, I, when I was moving, I selected my things and kept them aside with my two younger children, right. you understand? Yeah. So when he landed and he called me to tell me he had landed, and I said, I've moved out. Mm -hmm. And he said, is that what you want? I said, yes. He said, let's keep it quiet. I don't want anything in the media. I don't want to you know, anything. And I said, OK, no problem. And I've been keeping quiet for 10 years. He has been the one doing all the talking right now. Yeah. You know. He says that you assaulted his mother. Yes. Is, is that true? No. That's, what happened? That's quite the opposite. Okay. So I just gave him to our last child. Mm -hmm. And his mom you know, was coming to help out. And his mom will come Monday to Friday. She leaves on Friday that she must go to church. She must mm -hmm. attend her church. Mm -hmm. So my mom comes Friday to Monday. Mm -hmm. you know, my mom will leave in the morning on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. There was this one day his mom accosted my mom as my You know, we're all out there in, you know, talking and laughing and all that. My mom then picked her bag and said she was leaving. And by the time she got into the middle of the compound, his mom jacked my mom's clothes and was shouting. 
and saying my mom has stolen her son's money again. My mom should give her her money. She needs her money. She wants to do things. She don't. And it was until I was 28, 29, going into my 30s, I started fighting back. Right. And then it now escalated from, you know, um, verbal and all that, and then it became physical. Right. You understand? And then still, even with that, people would say, oh, you know, it's a man's world. And you would, I, I, I didn't think of myself, mm -hmm. you know, but until the last time that he did beat me up and I was almost paralyzed, that was when I decided that I need to go. But still, I stayed two more years after that, you know, but... He beat you until you were almost paralyzed. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I, we had gone out with the kids and we came back and um, I was changing my daughter and he saw you know, her nappy rash and it was a bad nappy rash and he was all over the place angry and all that, that she'd been molested. And I said, how? This is nappy rash and he was going on and shouting, who did I give his daughter to this and that? And I should, they, need to be, they need to check her and everything. And I tried to calm him down that this is nappy rash. I use Vaseline instead of powder. That's why it's so red, you know, that kind of thing. And he was going on and on. And I was like, okay. And at that point, I was getting upset, you know, like, you can't be doing this. And then he, he, I was like, okay, give me money. Let me take her to the hospital and let's get her checked. And then he hit me, you know. And at that point, I had like, you know, like, you can't keep beating me up, you know. And I held his hand. And so he just turned me over and hit me, and then he hit me at the back of my neck here, and that was it. I lost sensation to all my body, my body parts. I went down on the floor. I couldn't feel my arms. I couldn't feel anything, and he kept hitting me. He kept hitting me and hitting me, and I was shouting, Emeka, if you hit me one more time, I would die. I can't feel anything. I was only seeing the stars. So when he hits me, it goes poof. You know, that kind of thing. And that was only what I was saying. I could talk, I could hear, I could see, but I couldn't feel. This was in front of our kids. This was in front of his, his PA at that time, Debola. And I was, you know, trying to move my body. My body wasn't moving, you know. So when he realized himself, he got up, he walked out of the house. And I was there for like 10, 15, 20 minutes, I don't know. I was still trying to move, trying to move, trying to move my body. And then I felt this sensation all over, like a million pins, you know, poking me, pricking me and everything. And I think the nerves were beginning to connect or something, you know. And then I got up. And that was when I saw the boy, Debola, peeping from the door. I guess he had told the boy to come and check if I died. You know, that kind of thing. And then. I spoke the boy's name, I said, Debola, and the boy ran out. I think he didn't want to come close so that they don't say he's the one that killed me or something. Mm. And then I heard his car drive off, and I picked my children, and I ran to a friend's house. He's denying it, but I always, there are people that I run to their houses every time he beats me up. People that I run to their houses in the middle of the night, people that I run to their houses and I collapse. All this happened, and they are living witnesses. I have pictures. I presented those pictures during the divorce. I still have those pictures, but I'll only give my evidences in court. Right, so, so he, wow. For, for the kids. You know, I'm a very, very well experienced person. I've gone through so many stuff. I've seen families and I've, and I've uh, seen uh, things firsthand. And one thing I know about every man is that eh, if you have pride as a man, hmm, and you feel you have never offended anybody because you provide money for your family. Eh? Please know this, you are wrong. Don't think you are the best of all fathers simply because you provide and then you can tumble on everybody's emotions, you can tumble on everybody's, uh, everybody's uh, opinions and everything, beat up your wife, say you are a great dad, Come on, man. You are deranged. Your brain is not working fine. As a man, eh, you should be able, at some certain age, should be able to tell yourself the truth that he did. Despite I provided so much for my family, so much for my family, I also messed up as well. It takes really 
had like a well understanding man eh, with so much wisdom and eh, to sit down eh, and just think about his own wrongdoings and say, yeah, I messed up here, I messed up here, I messed up here. And tell yourself the absolute truth where nobody is there. If you can't, eh, then sorry, you know you should you definitely have a problem with your head. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, should I say, it's not, uh, it's not an ordinary high. There's something wrong with you. There's something mentally wrong with someone who thinks that it doesn't offend people. Good. Then don't, don't say it's normal. If you are that kind of person, you will lie here. Go and check. Go to psychiatry hospital and check your brain. You will definitely, you will definitely tell you something's wrong with you. Honestly. You will not realize it. But that's the way I say it, Mekaneke, because as far as we are talking bad about every man, eh? every person, and you should also talk good. Also the wife as well. I don't know why. When couples are having problems, they don't talk about the good side. You only talk about the bad, the bad, the bad side. Sometimes you say, oh, this man at so -so time or social -so time was so nice, was the best father. Took me through schools, did so much for me, but at times goes on, something, something happened. I don't know what switched in him, it became violence. Why not start from there? And also the husband as well. Why not start from that? Oh, this woman was so kind to me. I love this woman with all my heart. She was great mother. She did so much for me. Then before moving to the bad side. Before moving to the bad side, because everybody. Then the woman, eh, I don't know why women doesn't know how a man become poor. Why is it that women remove themselves from that aspect? Now she said, then they had no money. Landlord issues. How come a man who built school, who did so much, all of a sudden there was no money again? Now it's just the man alone that is only in that room of no money. A woman, a wife should be able to understand every man's finances and how come that man who was formerly doing well is no longer doing well now. But women, they, they don't take that blame. They remove themselves from there. And if they start saying, oh, this woman is an opportunist, then they, 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 they start getting angry and say, oh, you were beating me, you were doing this. You are beating me, you are doing this, you are doing that, you are a good person. But meanwhile, this man traveled, you left the house, went where? Where you go? Where did you go after you left the house? Hmm? See, so, yeah, if they start analyzing both Emeka Ike and his wife, Matai, they are all, they are both to blame. And they have let their lesson and they should move on individually. Simple and short. And as for the kids, eh? see, children, eh? mm -hmm. sometimes, eh? if you do not understand the story behind any stuff, bet between your father and your mother, eh? if you don't understand the story be uh, between your father and your mother, what happened, please, don't put yourself in the middle. You have the obligation eh? to be good to your father, respect your father, and give the best you can give to your father. And you also have the obligation to be good to your mother, respect your mother, and give the best you can give to your mother. Whatever happened between them, don't put yourself in the middle. Don't try to settle two people who are not meant to be with each other, who have already gone their separate ways. Don't try that as a child. Many, many children, eh, they hate papa because of the story from their mom. And many kids do hate their mother because of the story from their own mother. Get to know your mom. Remove that that idea of what happened. If your dad is still becoming, is still being a jackass to you, then you have every reason to have a personal fight with your dad. Not because of what happened between your mom and your dad. You are, you are, you are not. Don't, don't put yourself in that mess. Start a relationship with your father. Just the same way you start a relationship with your mom. Then if your mom he keeps being disrespectful to you based on our own issue, then you will know. By then, you will know exactly because of what Rebecca Eke's son said recently. And there was an audio. 
papa. And then he said whether she wants to kill my siblings so that it will be like it's only him that is alive. Let himself kill himself. Everyone should just kill themselves. Who says they can kill themselves to their children? He said he has other kids uh, my age around the world. And I was like, guy, okay. Is that supposed to phase me? Mm. Okay. The next morning, I got a 10 minutes VM. It's not the first time. He's always sending me VMs and sorting my life. Ah, you're doing music. You will never prosper. I'll see you on the side of the road and I'll spit on you. Don Jazzy will never see you. Blah, blah, blah. So your father said to you? Hold on. He kept going, sending more VMs, more VMs about eight VNs, I sent them to my mom. My mom could not even listen to it. She was trying to calm me down, me that. I'm trying to calm her down. I was so surprised, man. I was like, this can't be, this can't be someone I should be proud of. I started thinking like, How, what do I do when I bring a woman home or kids? Who is going to, my, this guy will bless my kids for me. Like, I don't understand. I'm, started making me get scared that am I going to have issues like this when I grow up? What do you want your dad to do or stop doing Nothing. like this? I don't want anything from you. I don't want anything from you. I think it's four days ago, I realized I don't want anything from this man. He told me to go crush my head by a truck, right? That was a lie for me. I'm dead to this man. Ask you this because you know how Nigerians are on social media, so I want to preempt that question. People will say that your mother has turned you against your dad, and that's why we are here talking. How do you respond to that? When I met my mom, the first thing I said was, I really hate my father. <laughs> when you met your mom, for the, met mom time, for the first yeah. time, Michael, go and drop in front of a truck right now. Now, 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 go and drop in front of jump from where you are, break your head, and smash it. You're my stress. You're my problem. You're the one I sent to school. I spent all my money that I didn't have. I was just getting money to save you. You jumped and took my children out and gave them us. And they are blackmailing me using you. And you're telling me, I... Go and do that now, 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 now. Don't do it tomorrow. I want to hear it. Think I'll let you blackmail me? And I will still get your mother out. <laughs> I will still get your mother out. <laughs> Is it Ken? Ah, Ken. Don't worry. The people behind this will hear from me. Don't wait for me to kill you. I will, my hand is not supposed to touch you. Go and kill yourself because. Well, uh, it seems like that guy has uh, personal issues with his own father. But if it's because of his mom, eh, please eh, remove yourself from that window. Mm -hmm. Remove yourself from that window. I've learned a lot from my personal life and uh, what I've gone through. And like I tell you, yeah, the best way, eh, the best way to do about this whole matter, yeah? mm -hmm. and to fathers as well, the best way to do it just have a personal relationship with that and have a personal relationship with God. Don't try to settle issue with, with, with the people that were the whole God. And then uh, to the parents as well, eh, do not pour the aid on what happened to you and your ex-wife or you and your wife towards your kids. Please. Please. You know why, eh? Because the end shall tell. There's a reason why a child is being born, eh? You go to school, he becomes a man of his own, have his own family, then go home. There's a reason why that journey, you are going through that journey. And do not say you took get money. You took their money and people will take care of you when you want to. God. Oh, God damn it. See, everybody needs love. And when you are going older, you will understand the meaning of love. You won't understand. Because I can't not understand now. I don't know what he's feeling, what he's going through, or because he's saying one thing and the wife is saying another thing. But to all the fathers out there, you guys will not be out there. To all the mothers as well. You won't understand the meaning of love now until you grow old. Mm -hmm. And again, to our kids, eh? create a personal relationship eh, with your parents apart from their personal issues. Remove yourself from that issues. Just make sure that they are not hurting each other. They can both live their separate life. Eh? 
the backup, like me now. But I have my dad living a separate life and my mom living in that separate life. And again, I've prayed to God that nothing will join them together. Me, myself. <laughs> that is my prayer. Yeah, not because they are both living well, living their separate life. I have a personal relationship with my dad, and I have a personal relationship with my mom. There is nothing I'm going to sit down with my mom discuss that has to do with my dad. And there's nothing I'm going to sit down with my dad that has to do with my mom. You know, that's my And I'm not, no, no concern at all. My personal relationship on how to be a better son to both my parents individually. Well, let me know exactly how you feel. This is a straight advice so, to all the matured men out there. Also, let me know your input and tell me how you see the matter. Because everybody made a judge and make a key as their white matter and car. That matter no go ever see the light. Light. They, they, they are, their marriage no go work. It won't work. 